Mike from Party of Four Crafts back again. Uh, I was asked after my last video walkthrough of my new 100 watt laser to do kind of a walkthrough of going through the process of running the laser. So I will do that now. Some of the things I won't make you sit through, but the first step is this has a six inch exhaust fan in the back and there's a hose back there that I run to the outside of my garage. So I'm in a little office that I built inside the garage and then the door to the house is here. So if it gets too hot or too cold, I can open the door and let the air conditioning and heating in. The other thing is it has a water pump that sits inside of this bucket and you put ice water in it in bottles. So I put frozen bottles of ice in there to keep the water cool. You could also get a chiller there, depending on which one you get. There's kind of a passive chiller that's a couple hundred dollars, and then there's an active refrigerant cooler, the, the CW5000 or 5200, that are you know four or five hundred dollars. But for now, I'm just using bottles of frozen water. I, I have my water pump my air assist and the laser all plugged into a power strip. So I just reach under here and turn those all on. The laser has a power switch that I showed you in the last video. It's the emergency stop button. You press it in to stop whatever is going on and then you twist it and let it pop out to turn it on. When you do that, the Ruida controller fires up. The laser head starts moving. You can see the, the red light. The red dot laser is on. Now I'm going to show you a bit about using light burn to run the laser. I told myself, turn that off for now so it's quieter. I told myself that I love Inkscape so much that even though Lightburn is a design program and a laser control program that I would probably continue using Inkscape for my designs and just use Lightburn to control. But I've been watching videos and light, it's pretty tempting to learn Lightburn for design as well. It has some pretty cool features with trace bitmap and things like that. But for now, I'm just using it to control the laser. So first thing you do in Lightburn is import your SVG. You just click File, Import. I'm going to be cutting out a, one of my fairy doors. These take a lot of effort to get the kerf just right so that the hinge goes through the slot and this part of the hinge goes through the two spinners on the hinge and things like that. So I've, I've cut it a couple of times just to get it right. So once you load it, Lightburn loads the settings that you had last time. It knows that those black rectangles want to be engraved and everything else will be cut. So it separated them into two layers. The black layer is the engrave and the red layer is the cut. I can double click on either one of those to see the actual settings and you can see my engrave is at 450 millimeters per second. This laser has a max of 500. I don't know if that's a physical max or a max set in the Rita controller and if I increased it I could go even faster but I don't want to try it and hurt the laser. Max power is 35, min power is 20. The min power is when the laser slowing down at the end of a line of engrave or when it's going around a corner on a score. It dims the laser so you don't get dark spots at the end of each engrave or on the corners of things that you're scoring and, and cutting. So that's something new that I didn't have to do on the K40 or on the Glowforge. It took me a, a few tries to get it right and now I got it. The cut is pretty similar. You set the speed. I put 20 at 30 power. I probably could have put 40 speed at 50% power, but this setting works for the material that I'm using, and so I'm going to stick with it. Later on, I can adjust it to try to get the, the speed a little better. Okay, now I will turn the laser on. Grab the material that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using some of the Lowe's whiteboard blackboard material. I really, really like this stuff. It cuts incredibly well. It doesn't need to be masked. I just wipe it off with a moist paper towel when it's done and all of the burn stains come off. So here's what it looks like. Really easy to center and align things. The way that I'm doing it right now, I'm just gonna slide this work up until the corner red dot is right there in the corner and it's approximately straight, but we'll be verifying that later. Now I can come over here and I have this set up. So let's say it wasn't there. I can move this over here 
and then I could use the Ruida controllers to move the head with the buttons until it gets exactly where I want it. And then I can press the origin button to make that the zero zero on the laser. And over here in Lightburn, I have it set to start from the current position and then I have it arranged in the upper right hand corner of my job. So you can see the green dot here that's saying that's where the laser is and that's where it's going to start. But before I do that, I'm going to frame the job. When I click on frame, it'll outline where the job is. So I'll be able to see if my, my piece is square and if the job is going to fit on the piece of wood that I have in there. There we go, it looks pretty square. It fits so far. That fits great. Ooh, it went off the edge. So it's a little crooked. Move it over and straighten it out. Run that frame again. Alright, it all fit. That means it's ready to go. So I'm going to put some goggles on. I'll leave the door open for a couple of seconds when it first starts. I'll probably do a time lapse of the whole process and then get back with you at the end. I also wanted to show you a couple of things over here. I could do a preview to see what it's going to look like, verify that's what I want. So I can see that those are going to be engraved, everything else is going to be cut just how I want, and it also tells me it's going to take approximately 4 minutes and 55 seconds. That's not perfect, it's probably going to come out somewhere between 4.30 and 5 minutes and 20 seconds, but it's pretty close and it lets me change settings and see how they'll affect the timing. After everything is set up, all I have to do, I'd normally I would close the lid and click start. So I'm going to click start, leave the lid open for a second to let you see it start, and then close it and do time lapse. Alright, here we go. A little smoky in here, so I'm going to close that up. Alright, I let the smoke clear and I opened it up. That took 4 minutes and 41 seconds, which was pretty close to the 4 minutes and 55 seconds that was estimated. Everything comes right apart and cut through just like they would expect. And uh, everything appears to fit together. The hinges go right in the slots and the post will go right through those holes and it'll all work just as I hoped it would. And I love this Lowe's whiteboard material because the smoke stains, they come right off with just a little bit of liquid. You don't even have to put masking on it, it just wipes right off. The black side on the other side is the same thing, there's a little bit of stain there. You can just wipe it right off with a paper towel with a little bit of water. I absolutely love that stuff, it cuts beautifully. So the only other thing that we have left is occasional cleaning. There's a mirror here that needs to be cleaned. Smoke can get through that hole and get in there and make it dirty. The lenses down here, people clean it occasionally, but the air assist is blowing air out through that hole, so it'd be very difficult for any smoke to get up in there. You could get a splatter or something, but it should be cleaned occasionally. There's another mirror over here that has to be cleaned, and then back up through the hole next to the warning laser sticker, there's another mirror that has to be cleaned. I still have the honeycomb bed in there, but it also comes with a knife bed. I just haven't put that in yet. And occasionally I took the bed out and I vacuumed out all the crumbs down there so we don't get them starting on fire or anything like that. Alright, I hope that answers all your questions. If you have any more questions, put them down in the chat below. If you'd like to see when a new video comes out, just subscribe and click the notification bell. And I will see you next time.